everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. You're going to want to stick with me here for this. If you are, in fact, interested in more information on Hylion Holdings, uh, the company as it's transpired to this point, and the projections going forward for this company, uh, you're you're going to want to you're going to want to stick around for this. Uh, we we might be looking at something very very interesting that's going to transpire over the next two years. Uh, and any of the, the, the bull camp and the bear camp are going to be focused on the same thing. Um, this is uh, not going to be uh, a secret anymore after the February 22 uh, years ending earnings report come out for 2021. We're going to wrap uh, up 2021. Uh, and I'm going to give you guys some, some things that I've looked at here, which has got me extremely excited. Uh, I, I think when we look at this highly on opportunity and we look how it's transpired over the last 18 months, um, I think it's been pretty dismal. But I think the dismal performance on the stock side of the house does not re reflect the opportunity that exists with highly on holdings, the company. It just doesn't. And we've been provided over the last 18 months with validation of the product within the hands of the fleets. So we know that this product is uh, absolutely viable. Uh, it is uh, being uh, introduced to over the road rigor uh, and it does work. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the majority of that validation for me, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, comes from the validation that we get from the hybrid uh, EX product that's uh, uh, been out in the field now for a, a long time. Remember we had earnings restated for 2020 Entering into 2021, uh, I will remind you guys uh, that post Q1, uh, we had 30 EXs on the books uh, sold. Now, I don't know if that was the 359 of accounts receivable plus a little bit that was able to trickle onto the balance sheet uh, since then. What I'm going to be focused in on is after this uh, Q4, earnings call, which will conclude 2021, I will be cross comparing it with the uh, estimations on the original investor presentation. Some of you guys have wiped your ass with it and don't think that it has any value. Uh, I disagree. Um, that thing is riddled with value. If you are in fact looking at this company from a, a perspective of an investor or drawing up a thesis as to what projections were put out there to the investor community on the onset. What I was able to see is a direct, uh, a direct, uh, distinct jump from 2021 projections to 2022 projections. And I don't necessarily understand what catalyst uh, Hylion looked at. They looked at CapEx and cost of durable goods to go up exponentially. So I don't know if they looked at it to say, look, if we just build the trucks, they will come, all right? Um, it, it seems to me that in my holistic evaluation of Hylion, they are putting an awful lot together here to uh, garner some interest here. And it all really comes down to their ability to uh, garner interest uh, within the fleets. I'm going to give you some examples here, and I don't want to bore the hell out of you guys, but I am going to try to walk you through um, my deliberation when I'm looking at the mathematics of projected units sold here, what we could be realistically looking for, because for me, the benchmark starts at 30. Um, that was declared through interviews uh, back in June of 2021 um, to, to, to say that there were 30. Uh, that were realized. Now, remember, we've deferred those forward until uh, the Q4. Now, of course, February 22 uh, earnings call could come out and just completely surprise us to the downside um, because this company really has uh, has delivered some really bad news. And I think it's a lot of it has been out of Hylion's control, um, you know, with, with the, the pandemic and the stressors that uh, go into that, as well as the supply chain issues. Um, potentially slowing down some of their orders, but you know th there's still the X factor out there. Do these fleets want this product? Do these fleets want this product? And and that is really the key here. When we start looking at 
tens and twenties of orders of the uh, hybrid EX, um, Hylion will fail. It will cease to exist. Um, the, the hybrid EX is a phenomenal product. That's why I really cringed on the last couple reports when Thomas Healy has doubled down on the competition on the landscape, specifically with the Cummins uh, CNG engine that they've put out. Uh, perhaps maybe going after uh, or a partially going after that same market that the hybrid product is aimed to go after. Um, I, I just don't see it that way. Perhaps maybe it's my deficiency. I wouldn't have said it if I was the CEO, but he chose to uh, earmark that as competition out there. You can run the hybrid products with the 15 liter engine or without it. Um, it's just that simple. Is it a direct competition? No, it's not because it's a, it's a brand new off the line engine that can provide that, that horsepower um, if that's what you wanna do, but it does not speak for the existing CNG units that are already in uh, the, the trucks that are under horsepowered and that need the supplement uh, supplement the 120 horsepower uh, deficiency rating uh, for those heavier loads that the hybrid EX product can, can supplement. Dexter with drive mix game is a perfect example of that very thing. It's a common CNG engine under the hood in his uh, Freightliner Cascadia um, and the hybrid uh, version allows that extra horsepower to be put into um, into application so the payload can be increased. It's just that simple. Um, it, it, this is not, it, not rocket science at all, but when I was going back and, and reassessing the data from what was proposed from 2021 to 2022, what I saw there and the real focus for me will be and will be for all highly on uh, bull shareholders that if we are right, that catalyst that increase and in margin increase in both sales, uh, cost of production, of course, will drastically increase, um, which is a great thing. Margins increase from 21% to 28% respectively, and that makes a huge difference to the bottom line. So let me give you some examples of what I'm kind of looking at, guys. What we're looking at now, based on the latest information from mid last year, is that we should have minimum of 30 on the books from 10 months ago, okay? So th those revenues shake out pretty, pretty simple at about $182,700 to the bottom line. Very, very simple. I take the 30 units declared, I multiply that by a factor of 29,000, which in my opinion is relatively low. It really is. But I'm going off of what Hylion used in that projection as being the cost of the, the goods uh, to put that into service. During the 2021 year, they used a margin uh, a factor of 21%. So that is, in fact, what I used. In all fairness, to draw up my calculations uh, to share with you guys on what I'm looking at to set that 2021 baseline, okay? Now, we can all agree that they're not going to meet the 300. If they meet the 300, um, I'm, I may sell the farm and put all the rest of my money in highly on. That's not going to happen. The question is, what could happen? What could happen between the 30 units that we know uh, were declared 10 months ago and what has transpired since then? Are we looking at an order book of 60? Are we looking at double that original 30 that was declared? Are we looking at projections that could render us 100 units? Are we looking at projections that could actually get us up to half of what Hylion projected on that original investor presentation? Is it possible? 100% it's possible. It is absolutely possible. I've got you know trucks pulling in and with return it, and all these companies come into fruition, I, I cannot keep track of the uh, number of fleets out there that have been provided these units over uh, the previous couple of years that have compounded to this place right here, where we were going to take a cumulative amount of units sold and put those onto the books for 2021. So we're really in between the 30 that we know exists, okay? Now, whether or not some of those 30 were already accounted for 
and I'm, you know, presuming that there's orders beyond the 30, which, you know, Detmar just took delivery of their units here just as of late. If my calculations are correct, those would be one of what should be many examples to go against that projection of 300 that was supposed to be turned out for 2021. I get it. They're not going to meet the 300. The whole idea behind this exercise is to understand where Hylion is from the 30 to now. What have they done over the last 10 months to garner interest in the hybrid EX product? And here's what it means if they can actually garner some interest. 100 units is $609,000 of bottom line, okay? You think... 609,000, you know, that, that is, to use Sherry Baker's words, it is immaterial, okay? Everything that we discuss right now when we're talking hundreds of units is not going to render the cost necessary to cover the cost of operations here. And I'll talk about what is going to be necessary to shoot for and cover those cost of operations into the future as we get off of this launch pad and stop celebrating orders of 10 or 20 on the books, that's not gonna do it for this company. It's just not gonna do it. We're gonna need to see orders of, 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 of thousands. And I'll give you the numbers because I was interested to see, I'm talking 2021 right now, what was projected for 2021 and what seemingly highly on at the time had enough information to benchmark a very, very distinct category, uh, catalyst between the 2021 projections and the 2022 projections. Part of that increase in units sold was the introduction for the first time in 2022 of the Hypertruck ERX. Now, when we're talking 2022, there are obvious drawbacks with this perfect storm with regard to the supply chain that has obviously affected those time frames for the delivery of the Hypertruck ERX. You want to cry about it? Go ahead and cry about it. It's no problem. I will be adamantly listening on the 22nd to understand if there are any revisions to those timelines to make sure that those 2,500 units of projected sales that occur, that are uh, supposed to have occurred in 2022, have a chance to be realized within the next 12 or 24 months going forward. Because a, a lot of people on the landscape are talking about how important the Hypertruck ERX is to this company. Um, it is everything to this company. It's not just important but I wouldn't forget the hybrid EX in this equation. And, and here's why the 150 units, which would be half would be about just a little bit less than $1 million of, of profit, bottom line profit. Now these are yearly figures here, all right? And when I did up these statistics, I, I, I sat back for a second and I thought, well, good grief. If, if, they're, if they could do 150, you know, that, that on the onset, I think if they came out and said they made half of the projections, um, that would seemingly be somewhat bullish uh, to me. And I don't know how the stock would react or the stock market would interpret that um, if they could close down 2021 with 150 units on the book. Now, me personally, guys, I don't see that happening. That is less than the projected 300. If it does happen, I think that could be a positive catalyst because it's on the upper end of my range from 30 to 150. The X factor in this is at where do we fall in between that spectrum? And if they come out and they say 178 units, I'll fall out of my chair. I just don't think that's going to happen. And I don't think that's going to be as positive of a news uh, than, than the stock may actually react to that positively. And here's why. When we're talking about hundreds of units, I use the 150 example here, rendering just about $1 million of bottom line revenue, okay? Cost to operate this business runs about 110 to about 135 on the high side, okay? When you chunk that up quarterly, we are talking about 27 and a half to about $30 million per quarter of just operating expenses, guys. Operating expenses goes into everything. 
R&D, payments and salaries, keeping the lights on, new equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Everything that it costs to run a, a, a business like this is, is very spendy. And Hylion just so happens to have a, a business model that is, by all intents and purposes, a lean business model. So $27.5 million per quarter really shouldn't be that, uh, that much of a demand on the books. Um, but when you don't have sales, um, this is where we start looking at these numbers. And this is what really kind of raised my eyebrow. And I was like, man, I, I, I think I'm going to have to fall back and chalk up 2021 as just being a pretty dismal year with regard to whatever delays were incurred by the company, whatever sales they're able to garner on this uh, particular earnings call to close out 2021. If they can do 150, I think that'll be a positive for the stock. I think the positive could go to five, six, seven bucks uh, on the upside. But to be quite honest with you, that is just a drop in the bucket and it is just a start. 150 units is going to render just less than $1 million, guys. That's one one twenty seventh of you know the, the total cost uh, that's necessary to keep the lights on at Hylion for a quarter, okay? Just to put that into perspective for you guys, if you look at the total year, year over year, 150 units at a million dollars with a hundred million dollars uh, on the super low lean end, they're talking about revising to 110 to 115 per year of operating expense, guys. $1 million is immaterial. It really just doesn't mean anything. Now, the hybrid EX product is a fantastic product. It meets a niche in the, in the marketplace. It's a good product, but it, is it going to move the needle uh, for, for highly on holdings? In my assessment, the answer is no. The reason why I put these videos out is to have realistic expectations going into February 2022. And I don't I don't think anybody in their right mind is going to enter into this earnings call, even though the consensus is that there's going to be some sort of, of, of revenue that is uh, put on the books. Um, there's certainly going to be earnings. As far as revenues, that, that's going to be a non-starter, that, that this quarter, uh, this year is going to close down as a non-revenue year. It's just that simple. It's not, not going to happen. <laughs> Excuse me, profit. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen with the uh, EX product carrying the bulk of the responsibility to garner any type of inflow for this company. It is immaterial. It wouldn't have mattered, to be honest with you, if they had even done 10 times that amount. If the projected amount was, you know, a thousand units, I mean, we, we would have been talking, you know, we would have been talking $10 million. $10 million is still a drop in the bucket, you know, less than 10% of the total operating costs. So, you know, even to put a, a drop in the bucket here, when we're talking about the hybrid EX product, um, it will absolutely supplement. And, and I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news here, because what I'm going to talk about is the Hylion's projected catalyst from 2021 to 2022 was the real meat and potatoes here, okay? If you extrapolate the numbers specifically, what Hylion declared was in 2021, it was going to be a ramp up year. It's just that simple. Now, whether or not 2022 ends up being that ramp up year because of the delay, so be it. I'm willing to accept that and here's why. Whatever catalyst, whatever interest they believe that they've garnered uh, within Hylion, within their outreach and network of existing clients that they have, seemingly put them on a path to build an awful big facility to operate as uh, their own direct to consumer uh, 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 delivery of their product. I, I don't want to call them an OEM because the integration of the OEM is really the key catalyst to making sure that some of these declared numbers. Uh, the, the increase in, in those numbers could actually become material because the 2021 projections to the 2022 projections were, were off the chain. Let me give you an example. 2021 projections for the EX uh, product was 300. They ramped that up to 4,100 units, 4,100 units. 
I just told you if they sold a thousand EX units, it would be immaterial to the bottom line, 10 million of earnings. And that's nothing. That's immaterial just as much as the 913,500 of income that I think they're going to probably report somewhere around the half a million dollar mark. It's immaterial. It means nothing. Now, what it does mean is that they can generate and garner sales and interest in the marketplace. My problem is that this is a cumulative collection of these orders in that these orders need to start churning and they need to start churning on a daily basis if they're going to get up into the thousands of orders that they've projected. And they projected these orders. The increase from 300 to 4,100 uh, units would have meant 33292000 to the bottom line for the entire year. Divide that by four and you're talking about $8 million. Now, this is just the EX unit specifically. Now we're talking, now we're talking because we're talking about um, eight, uh, $8 million of bottom line profit against the operating cap of $27 million per quarter. You see where I'm going with this? Eight, 16, 24, almost one third of the operating costs for the, the business is what Hylion is projecting they were going to meet in 2021, 2022 with the massive increase in the hybrid EX product, okay? So the give and take for me is Thomas Healy's remarks on his concern about competition in the marketplace. Well, okay, Thomas, if you can't do 4,100 units, what is, the, what is the rendering going to be? Is it gonna be half of that again? This whole half-life on the projections is, is just absolutely killing us. But I think when we're talking about the hybrid uh, EX product, it's immaterial at best anyway, because there's no way that they can keep the lights on at Hylion Holdings if their flagship product was the hybrid EX product. Do I think it's irrelevant? No, I sure don't. I sure don't. Because those projections at 4,100 do absolutely mean 8 million per quarter to the bottom line. That's pure, pure profit, okay? Now, the increase in the margin also speaks to a, a, a bullish thesis surrounding whatever catalyst they saw between these two years, ramp up year into the, the, the more of the first year of mass scale up and, and step up into um, mass production, okay? So the margins went from 21% to 28%. Fantastic, okay? Margin increased probably because the cost of durable goods would go down if they're being bought in bulk volume. If you paid attention to the Q3 call, Sherry Baker alluded to this, that they would get better deals uh, on the cost of goods. Once those uh, cost of goods would increase, um, the solidification of the, of the, the uh, business relationship, uh, et cetera, et cetera, should improve. Therefore, those margins back to Hylion should improve. And that is what they're declaring to us will happen, is that those margins will push up to 28%. But for the total year sales, of the hybrid EX, we're talking about 33,292,000 for the total year uh, of projections. Now, compared to the 913,000 of, of garbage that we're actually going to do for this year, okay, it, the, the, the amount of increase is absolutely worth paying attention to. And it really comes down to that X factor. This is why the retail community is binding together so much with regard to we, we do need sales. We do need sales. And I think eventually those sales will come. And through the numbers, this company could quickly, and I want to stress quickly, step into profitability. And the scary part about it is once they get to proper uh, uh, to profitability, the, the, the re-rating of the company goes on on the fly. And you want to see a stock price that can move once that re-rating happens. Hylion seemed to think that they had something there to show from going from the beginning company where they were going to roll out a few units. I would imagine that they tokened the 300 units as just being those units that they could get out to the fleet and provide those units 
as they came in on an, on an order base. And that's really what they've been doing to a lesser scale. Now, I do believe that they've uh, uh, suffered from the supply uh, constraints uh, from the supply chain on the EX. That's obvious in the numbers, because I tell you what, if they turn out 300 as proposed, I will, again, fall off my chair. I, I will fall off my chair, okay? And I just don't see that happening. And I, anybody that covers the company with regard to the headwinds that's going on right now, we just cannot in any capacity uh, project that that is going to happen, okay? The X factor in this whole thing is to understand the increase from the 300 to the 4,100. And how are we going to start to garner those increases from a few hundred orders to a few thousand orders going forward, okay? I think they've got something up their sleeve. I think they identified that this was going to be a critical impasse of the company to do that ramp scale up. And they've got enough partnerships. They've got a, a, a board of directors that they keep on adding to every sing, single week, it seems like, to start to tap into these collections or connections that they have here to start to ramp up from something that is immaterial to something that is going to get Wall Street's attention. It's just that simple. Now on the hyper truck ERX side, this is where it gets really, really interesting, guys. And it's just as simple as the math. OK, you can say one way or the other, wax on, wax off. You can say whatever you want about this company. It's going out of business or it's going to the moon or it's going to moon. I have to say it right. The hyper truck ERX is the key. 2021 projected sales was zero, of course, as appropriate. 2022 sales were projected to ramp up to 2,500. OK, now I point back to the original order book that is queued up right now at 1590. OK, part of those orders will be built against this queue. OK, now the 2500 Hypertruck ERX orders that they projected going from zero to 2500. What is it that Hylion knows that we do not know? What is it that they've put in motion with this company with regard to solidifying an all-star board, hiring on like there's no tomorrows, no tomorrows will be, uh, new hires will be something that we'll be keying off on on the earnings report. Uh, new orders come in for the Hypertruck ERX built against their backlog. We'll be paying attention to that. What is highly unknown that seemingly the investor community does not know at this juncture with regard to their plans on how they are going to mass scale up. They have to have something. They cannot have nothing. If they have nothing, this company will fail. It's just that simple, they'll fail. You really think that they have done all this work to come up to this point, to be solidifying relationships in the manner that they have, to be able to product to verify what they have. If they haven't garnered interest or at least assessed that there's enough interest, their website, and their original investor presentation is riddled with industry interest in this product. So the scarier, deeper question resides in how is it that they're going to go from what is right now still zero? OK, and I think that will extend based on the supply chain uh, issues that they have going on with the hypertruck ERX. But going forward, time will heal all. And what Hylion looked at on that original projection will at some point be realized. They will have a final product. Now, on one hand, are they going to have a hypertruck ERX, to use Thomas Healy's words from the TCO conference, a product that nobody wants to buy? Or are they going to have a finalized and validated product that fleets are clamoring to own? 2% market penetration is what we're looking here for, guys, in a $98 billion turnover every single year. This is an $800 global business, probably closer to a trillion dollar global business now. We're talking about a $94 billion uh, business every single year on the turnover uh, capability. Go get it. Is there going to be enough interest there to garner the 2%? Now we're starting to get into years 23 and 24, which obviously to realize some of those projections may take a little bit longer. Who cares? <laughs> if those projections are going to be met, who cares? Are you willing to wait till 2026 
2027 until that 2.2 billion of bottom line revenue is met and we can make projections that certainly they may have the best chance weighed against their performance and the performance of their units in the field that they can't even maybe go after that moonshot and garner more than 2% of the market. Yeah, that, that's going to be the cool part. And you're thinking that's a pipe dream, Ryan, that's not going to happen. I beg to differ. Here's why. The 2,500 units sold per year, okay, which was projected to go from zero in 2021 to 2022 to 2,500 units means 803 million to the bottom, to the top line, okay? 803 to the top line. We are talking about $2 million, $200 million per quarter. 200 million, okay? Now that is affixing a 28% margin onto the Hypertruck ERX. 2,500 units garners 803 million dollars of revenue, okay? I, I already accounted for, that's the margin revenue right there. I already counted for, that's not gross sales. Gross sales is significantly more than that, okay? But 803 million for the entire year divided by four, means $200 million of profit for this company per quarter, 200 million, okay? 200 million. Stop and think about that for a second. 200 million plus the little 8 million that could, 208 million per quarter for this company that can operate on 27 million on the low end, probably 30 million on the top end. It's expansion time, baby, okay? That's 2,500 units, all right? We have fleets out there that are chomping at the bit here who have enormous fleets. Does this have to just be a long haul application? It could be. I think Thomas Healy is going after the soft spot in the market. I think there's a lot of players that are working the uh, middle duty and uh, short duty uh, types of applications. And I think Thomas Healy is going after the big uh, the big market there. Now, whether or not they are going to be able to reach this mass scale up, and for me, 2,500 will get her done. It'll get her done, okay? 208 million uh, of sales, we're talking about quad that 816, $832 million per year, okay? That just about gets us up to that $1 billion, which is half of the projections on that original investor presentation that was made available to the public on the onset uh, when this was shell company under the SPAC, all right? So things to get excited about, and people are like, they're not gonna sell one unit. I, I beg to differ. I think 2,500 units per year is actually more than doable. Now, going into 2023, going into 2024, the, the projections start to get a little bit crazy. But I tell you what, in 26 and 27, 2026 and 2027, is it not feasible if we have integration from the fleets that these guys are going to blow through what they originally estimated going from zero to their first something at 2,500 units? Is it not far-fetched to think that they could garner significantly more than that? Now their projections say that they can. Their projections are at the 15,000 unit mark, okay? But the sheer nature of the numbers and how they shake out at 2,500 units is incredibly, incredibly attractive. When you're talking about the projections of this company, looking at it and evaluating it now on this February uh, call that's coming up in a couple weeks and, and, and not having too outlandish of expectations because I think that catalyst, the in-between the lines between 2021 and 2022 uh, is, is worth noting. The margin increase from 21% to 28%, th those of which I used in the factors that I have projected to you guys today, is I think the in-between where we really need to put the focus and when that catalyst happens in the future, it really just comes down to, are you investing that they're going to, to realize that catalyst? Are they going to go from zero units to 2,500 units of production? If you look at the 1,590 units that are 
back ordered right now, one of which is a big order from Agility at a thousand. If they're able to do a hundred of those units, okay, in the first years over the next 10 years, right? A hundred of those units, you're talking about a nice chunk out of that 2,500 units. And that's on the initial fleet rollout to get these units into the hands of these fleets and really having them uh, enjoy uh, the potential of realizing uh, net carbon negative type of emissions profile, lower in those ESG scores. It's huge, right? So when we start to really extrapolate the data, um, it, it really starts to come to fruition. But the whole point of this video was to come out and talk about the realistic expectations coming into February, because like I said, they could sell a thousand uh, hybrid units and it's not going to make any difference. In the words of Sherry Baker, I would chalk this up 2021, the entire year as being immaterial. And I think the February call is probably going to be just the same. Okay. I'll be with you side by side, uh, adamantly looking at how the numbers shake out. Uh, I'll go to work after the numbers come out. Uh, I will probably be in the discord group when the call is made as well. Um, but I would suggest uh, a couple of things. Have realistic expectations. Uh, understand that the headwinds that are going on right now in the industry are very, very real. Um, I don't think that they're being helped at all by any type of uh, tailwind in the marketplace right now. I think times are tough. And I think right now with a stock price that is priced probably as low as it needs to go, uh, priced right at that cash value, when we're throwing out numbers of 200 million a quarter, does this company really deserve to be valued at its cash position right now at 650 million on the books? Probably not, but it's a prove me moment. And the prove me moment is gonna be extended over the next couple of years to see how they can realize that very catalyst between the lines that they projected to investors on the onset that there would be a scale up from low volume production to mass scale up production based on the need that they assessed at the time when they rolled out this opportunity to the public markets. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message. I really appreciate you. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, man. Hit the subscribe button for me, join the message, just share the message with anybody out there that's interested uh, in the Hylion Holdings comments, uh, content. I always try to keep the focus on Hylion because everything else is futile. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.